They are the masters of wisdom. Masters of wisdom. The lords of compassion. The society of illumined minds. They have many different names. The Mahatmas of the East. They don't come exclusively from the East, but they live in the remote mountain and desert areas of the world, like the Himalaya, the Andes, the Rockies, the Carpathians, the Gobi and other deserts. And from there, from behind the scenes of our lives, they have beneficently overseen the evolution of humanity from the very earliest times. From a point where we were all running around probably naked, early, uh, animal man or and woman, we have come to a point today where we look at ourselves somewhat civilized a little bit. It's all due to the influence and the the protection and the stimulus of our consciousness of these perfected men. Now, when you talk about that, are you talking about uh, people like uh, the Buddha and Indeed. Jesus Christ? People like Hercules and Hermes and Krishna and the Buddha, uh, Jesus, Muhammad. These are all members of that group. And when people think about Jesus, they think of him up in the sky, you yeah, know, yeah. sitting at the right hand of God. Not at all. So you're talking about the great teachers of the all time. The great teachers of all time come from that same spiritual center of which the Lord Maitreya is the head and leader. Question might be, are you a missionary, a theologian? What are you, and where is this coming from? None of these things. I'm not an evangelist, a missionary. I may be a man with a mission, but not a missionary. You know, there is a difference. Mm -hmm. I am a painter, an artist, who was contacted way back in 1959 by one of the close disciples of the Christ. The Christ is really not the name of an individual. It's the name of a great master, a great, powerfully, highly evolved man, uh, in fact, the master of all the masters, and the masters are men like us who have really preceded us in evolution and finished this mm -hmm. evolutionary path on which we are all set. I was contacted by one of these masters who lives in the Himalayas uh, early in 59. Soon after that, he said, now our master, the master of all the masters, has something important to tell you. And then the voice of his master, the Lord Maitreya, to give him his personal name, who is the master who embodies what we call the Christ principle. The, the energy of love. So he is the Lord of love. Lord Maitreya is not a name which most Christians would associate with the Christ. What is his relationship to the Christ? Maitreya and the Christ are one and the same individual. And he worked through Jesus by overshadowing Jesus 2,000 years ago in Palestine his consciousness entered into that of Jesus at the baptism, and from the baptism to the crucifixion, Jesus was the Christ. And that's the most usual form for the manifestation of the teacher, the avatar. Just as the Buddha before him worked through that, the, the vehicle, the Prince Gautama, from about the age of 19, manifesting himself as one of the avatars for the previous age. This time, the Christ himself, the Lord Maitreya himself, has come into the world. Person? He appears to people in the thought form they have of their, the one they are awaiting. Christians are awaiting the Christ, so they see him as the Christ. Hindus await him as Krishna, they see him as their idea of Krishna. Buddhists await him as Maitreya Buddha. And so he's kind of the universal he is teacher, the universal, the universal God, the world teacher. The teacher for all groups, religious and non-religious alike. There have been, according to your writings, uh, lots of signs and signals, uh, uh, lighted crosses mm -hmm. in the United States yes, a number of yes, times. Indeed. Uh, yes, indeed. In the church in, in uh, Tennessee, there's, a, there's a, a little fundamentalist Baptist church in which five huge 40-foot high crosses of light lighten every single evening. And if you're inside the church, you look through six-foot windows, and there's a 40-foot cross outside. And the miracle healings occur in the church. Now, they have healing people. waters? There are healing waters, too, in many parts of the world. At Nairobi, where he was when that picture was taken. In Tlacote, near Mexico City. Nardana, in northern India. Why has 
the Christ stayed so behind the scenes when there are millions of people starving in the world, why doesn't he come out and solve the problem? By karmic law, he cannot simply create all the food and, and share it out and give it to all the starving millions. And we would say, oh, that's good. We don't need to do anything about this, you see? Clap our hands. This absolves us from our right to do it. It's our problem. He has poured into the world a new energy, which he calls the energy of equilibrium. And this brings about harmony in the world. It acts through the law of action and reaction, which, as you know, are opposite and equal. Mm -hmm. And by its action, its harmonizing action in the world, we will create out of the present violence and tension and discord and uh, unhappy conditions uh, a period of peace, tranquility, mental and emotional poise, and in exact proportion to the existing disharmony, disequilibrium. If you look at what's happening on the political field in the world, the, the demand for freedom and democracy, which is sweeping the world, not only in East Germany and the Eastern Bloc, but across the world. Even the states of, of America, he says, will demand their own independence. Not to break away from the Union, but to be independent within the Union. And this has already started. Is coming to the hearts of everybody and that's the result of the energy which he pours into the world which creates this demand for self-expression for self-identity Maitreya is seeking the earliest possible time to appear openly in the world he will appear first in America look for a man who is calling for justice in the world for all the world, for freedom for all the world. When enough people are responding to what he has to say, Maitreya will be asked to speak to the whole world. And on that day, the day of declaration, as it will be known, an extraordinary thing will happen. Simultaneously, throughout the world, people will see Maitreya's face, by now familiar, on their television sets. Everyone, every adult in the world will hear his words, his thoughts, his ideas inwardly, silently, telepathically. While he is speaking his energy, the energy of love will flow out in tremendous potency through the hearts of all humanity. This will evoke an intuitive heartfelt response to the message and on the physical plane there will be hundreds of thousands of spontaneous healings, cures throughout the world our response to this extraordinary day and this message will determine the whole future of our world Maitreya has already said my heart tells me your answer, your choice, and is glad.